Intrusion Detection Solutions. And with us today is Tom Meckler. He is our Product Marketing Manager at Bosch. Tom is our Intrusion Detection Expert. He's going to talk about where we've been and where we're going in the intrusion world. So, as I like to call him, Mr. Intrusion himself, uh, please welcome Tom Meckler. Thanks, Rick. Thank you very much. Good morning, and thanks everybody for coming today. Can you hear me okay in the back of the room? All right, awesome. You can hear me because of that fine EV audio equipment, I'm, I'm presuming. So thanks, Rick. As you pointed out, I'm Tom Meckler. I'm the Regional Marketing Manager for Intrusion Products for, for Bosch. I'm the product guy, but I don't talk a lot of nuts and bolts. I, I, I tend to talk about applications and how we can solve customer problems. So that's what we're going to do today. But first, we do got to talk a little bit about nuts and bolts and talk a little bit about our control panel line. And this is a chart. I'm not going to read every box. Don't worry. But as I introduce our control panel line, we have six control panels in the family and they're in, in two groups. The panels that are all the way over to your right, stage right, which is my left, are the G-series panels. That's the B8512G, the B9512G. Anybody ever hear of the company called Radionics or the brand name called Radionics? Well, those are the latest generation of those panels that you, when you think of the Radionics commercial panel, that's them, right? But they're the latest generation and they do more than those panels ever even thought of. They didn't even, they couldn't think of the things yet that these panels can do. But when we're looking at this chart, what's important to note is that there is a family of products. We have the B series over on the left. A couple things that are important for those of you that might be programming the systems or servicing the systems, all the programming is the same across the board. The only difference is the bigger panels do more. So if you know how to add a point or a zone to that big panel, you know how to add one to this little panel. And that might be important someday if you're trying to save a couple bucks, you're trying to save some space, because another important thing, and we're gonna talk about encryption and, and government sales and all that, all these panels meet the highest level of encryption. They could, all these panels could be used in a skiff, and you're sitting down, right? All these panels are TAA compliant. We're manufacturing all our, our panels today in Hermosillo, Mexico, which is a Trade Act agreement company. So you can use any of these panels in a government application. So there you have that. So looking at the panels and just a little bit of overview, these are the B-series panels. That's what it looks like. We don't have one here, so you'll just have to trust the picture. Some key signatures here. One is that all Bosch panels have Ethernet on board. No more Ethernet modules, no more plug that thing in and hook it up. They all come with Ethernet on board. All Bosch panels have a USB port for programming. So if you're a technician, you can take a mail-to-mail -mail USB cable, plug it into your laptop, plug it into the panel, and program it locally. Don't need to disconnect the network, don't need to figure out your IP settings. It just plugs in and it works. All Bosch panels have plug-in slots for cellular and or PSTN communication. That's a cellular module there. And this one's an old picture, so that's actually a, uh, a CDMA module that next year is gonna stop working when Verizon takes down the network. Today, we're selling an LTE module, which is a new version of that. How do you get the old one to the new one? You unplug the old one, you update the firmware in the panel and you plug the new one in. It's as easy as that. So we've designed that to ride with the future as we go. Because we know that we're not going to be able to drive the cell companies and what networks and what technology they're using. We're going to have to ride with it. So we designed these panels to ride with it very easily. Literally update the firmware, plug in a new module, you're good to go. This is the big panel. This is the one that, wow, that looks like a radionics panel. And if you look at it at first glance, it probably looks like those panels you've been installing for the last 40 years. And it's very close, except there's a few differences. Again, Ethernet on board, USB on board, two module slots here for, if you're using PSTN and cellular, you can plug them both into the board. So that's the general overview. The biggest difference 
there's a few differences, but there's three big differences between the G series and the B series. One of them, well, they all support these keys. I'm gonna jump around just a little bit. One of them is backwards compatibility. So if you ever installed a panel that had a 7412 in its part number or a 9412 in its part number, and it could be a D9412GV4 or a D9412B1 from 1998, this panel will drop in and replace it and use all the modules that are currently connected to that older panel. That is a significant advantage for you because in 1998, when we had that other panel, we didn't think about things like cellular connection and network connections. Well, we were thinking about network connection, but we weren't doing it yet. And, but that panel does have, has no idea how to talk to the cellular network. But you've got keypads and you've got point modules and you've got relays and all this kind of stuff that you'd like to not have to replace. This is a drop-in replacement. So you can take out the old panel, put the new panel in, update the program. We even have a utility for that and give your customer the modern communication and features that they need without having to replace their entire infrastructure. So that's kind of neat. This is the family of keypads that we have and there's a couple of these that are down on the show floor that, that we can show you how they work. Our, my first personal favorite is the touchscreen keypad. Neat story about the touchscreen keypad. As you are probably aware, Bosch is also in the automotive industry. We're one of the largest suppliers. Depending on the day, we are the largest supplier, but depends on how those other guys are doing. But, so it's, it's safer to say we are one of the largest suppliers to the automotive industry. And one of the things we make is the infotainment system that goes in your dashboard. When we were working on the user interface for this keypad, we consulted with the guys who make the one in your dashboard, the ones that we sell there. How should the menus look? You know, how should things flow? What should the icons look like to be most useful? So when customers are using that keypad, they don't understand why, but it feels familiar to them because it's not exactly like the one in their dashboard but uses some of the same concepts. Integration. One of the things we like to hang our hat on is our integration capabilities. And at Bosch, we do some very unique things. The most unique thing with our intrusion panels is how they integrate with our IP cameras. All Bosch cameras are IP based. All Bosch cameras can integrate with our Bosch panels. There's a lot of things we can get out of that, and it's pretty cool. But first, I want to give you a brief introduction to what the camera can do. Why is the intrusion guy talking about cameras? Because it's an important part of the whole security system, and I'm going to tell you why in a second. Here's a list of some of the analytics that we have that are built into our cameras. They're all at the edge, right? So we can detect something is inside the field, something has entered the field, we can count things, we can tell which direction something's going. And when I say something, we can tell is that a person, is it a car, is it a truck, is it a bike or a motorcycle? You know, a person is not a deer, you know, so if there's a deer walking up to your fence, you probably don't care. But if there's a person walking up to your fence, you probably do. Color, size, speed, direction. Our cameras have all this capability built in and they can detect things like that. They can detect that someone is walking at a certain speed in a certain distance towards a certain something that you might not want them to walk next to. That's great. The cameras can detect all of that. But what do you do with that information? Well, wouldn't you like to be able to report it? By connecting the camera to the intrusion panel over a network, the panel can treat that camera like an alarm point. In fact, each camera can be eight alarm points. And it's just like a door contact, a motion detector. Once it activates, you can decide how you want to report. So the way this kind of works here, in fact, not even kind of, the way it actually works is the camera sends information to the alarm panel. Then the alarm panel, based upon its programming, decides what to do with that information. Maybe nothing. You know, system's disarmed, it's okay if somebody's here. Well, I don't care. Maybe I don't want somebody here. So I can do things like, 
make a noise at the keypad, enunciate an event. So somebody hears that and walks up to the keypad and does something. Make an announcement through a PA system. You have approached a secure area, please leave immediately. Send a text. Somebody's hanging out by the back door. Send a text to the building manager, the school principal, etc. Or, now nah, this is a big deal, call the police. Send a report to the central station. All within the programming of the panel, it can decide how to report all those things. So the camera is a very intelligent sensor. It can detect all those kinds of things that you want to detect. And the panel's job, really, an alarm panel's job has always been to report things. Something bad has happened in my building and I'd like somebody to come. That's what an alarm panel does and it can take all that information and communicate it in that way. So why would you do such a thing? Well, there's several applications for this. One is a blocked emergency door, a blocked fire door. Anybody ever have a fire marshal come in and do an inspection on their building or have a customer who had an inspection and they had stuff in front of their fire door? Yep, they do not like that. When, because the fire marshal's job is to say, yep, when I left that building, it was safe. So when they walk into that building and the fire door is no longer a fire door because there's a pile of boxes in front of it, the first time they're gonna yell at you, the second time they're gonna write you up, and the third time, maybe before the third time, they're gonna write you a fine. That's a problem and it's not safe. The camera can detect an object in the field and say, hey, there's something in front of this door and report that to the alarm panel. The alarm panel can send a text, send a message, however you want that reported for somebody to come and remove that offending object from in front of the door and now you have a emergency exit again. This might be my favorite application for all this because it's, it, it, it kind of makes use, I keep saying kinda, I'm gonna stop saying kinda. It makes use of the capability of being able to monitor more than one thing. Here's the example. I have on a camera and I'm looking down the fence line, right? And we have this demo, I can show you this demo in the, in the booth later if you wanna see it. So I'm a camera, I'm looking down the fence line and I'm looking down this fence line. Someone is approaching my fence. There shouldn't be anybody approaching my fence. So I can detect someone in this area they haven't breached my perimeter yet. I don't want them to. So once I detect something there, someone there rather, I could play a message. You're approaching a secure area. Please leave immediately. Turn on the floodlights. Oh, they, they've caught me. And any burglar that, I don't know if there's any smart burglars, burglars, but if there were smart burglars, once they realized they'd been caught, they'd take off, right? Yeah, not this one. I'm gonna go to the place where they don't catch me walking up towards the fence. But let's say they're not a smart burglar. And if they're a burglar, they're probably not. And they jump over the fence. A second analytic detects when they have jumped over the fence and they cross this line. And now, it, now, we, got, now we got an issue, right? release the hounds, make some noise, call the police, whatever you're going to do, because now they have breached the perimeter, approach and breach. One camera connected to the panel over the network. The camera's doing its job. It's the surveillance system. That's what it does. It's giving you video of all this stuff. And in addition to that, it can communicate with the intrusion system and report these events so you can have a better response. Up until this type of capability, we've always thought of cameras as forensic, forensic tools. Something happened, let's go back and look and watch it and see, oh yeah, somebody jumped over the fence last night. That's why all the tractors are gone. This turns it into an alarm event. And it's no longer forensic because it's detecting it before it happens or as it happens and allows you to react to it right now. Another example is a car someplace it's not supposed to be. This particular picture is the back door. This reminds me of my favorite Starbucks in my town that has kind of an alien back and has the door there. And if you think of that, let's say it's a store, a great a common way to rob a store is to have your buddy wait by the door in their car you rob the store, you book out the back door, 
where nobody's expecting you and you, and you take off. Well, in order to do that, your buddy's got to sit there for a little while. So the camera can detect that a car has been in this area for X amount of time. You decide what X is. And again, activate the alarm panel, make a noise, send a text, whatever. Other applications for this, a fire lane in front of the store, the bus lane in front of the school, the area that nobody's supposed to be parked outside of that military base. All those applications, again, if the camera can detect it, the panel can report it. Event verification, as you might be aware, Bosch has the ability to tell its cameras to send video to other locations, you know, via text, via email, via a message, via cloud services. The camera can trigger the, or the panel can trigger the camera to say, hey, you got an event, they're gonna wanna see the video for this, send it off. So the event verification can see the video associated to that event and respond to it. You probably could tell I'm pretty animated, so I usually don't have a lot of animation in my slides, but I put animation in this one. You ready? Object removed. I could tell you the story, but I don't have enough time, but I've basically been obsessed with motion detectors since I was about six years old, and if you have time, I'll tell you the story down on the floor. But a motion detector can't tell if someone has removed a picture off the wall. A camera can though. So if that, if that picture is removed, the camera can say object removed, activate a point on the alarm panel. I was talking, were we talking about the museum? We're talking with somebody about a museum this week and some of the things we can do, it was you, okay. I, I thought he said, maybe we talked about both of you, I don't know. But there's some of the things we can do with this capability in a museum, for example. Detect when they get too close to the picture, or the picture, portrait, picture, yeah, why not? Detect when they've removed the picture or the artwork or whatever. And again, how do you respond to all that kind of stuff? The other thing a camera can do is tell you if it can't see anymore. I've lost video. So, if somebody empties your warehouse, you're not gonna have any video of it. So what do you think this guy's about to do? He's about to spray the lens of the camera so that the camera can't see him when he comes to empty your warehouse and you don't know it's an inside job, but guess what? The camera can detect loss of video and activate a tamper event that is reported by the alarm panel. And just like if somebody leaves a door open or knocks a motion detector off the wall, when you go to arm the system, if you have a camera tamper event, it won't let you arm. Why? I can't let you arm. We have a problem with your security system. Camera tamper, you go out, you realize somebody's painted the lens, so you wait for them to come back and arrest them before they empty your warehouse. Very simple things, all by this interconnection between the panel and the cameras. The other important thing I almost always forget to say is that capability does not mean it's the only thing you can use the camera for. The camera is still part of your surveillance system. The camera can be connected to any video management system you want. I don't know why anybody wouldn't use Bosch video management system, but just in case you were using somebody else, it doesn't matter. The camera is connected to the alarm panel and giving you this capability regardless of if you're using another VMS, if you're using some other kind of system, or even not, if you just have a card, an SD card in that camera at the edge and it isn't even connected to a video management system, all this stuff's gonna work. So that's an important message. Another way we can integrate our intrusion with video is through BVMS. We can actually take an intrusion panel and bring it into the VVMS system. So things like arming and disarming the system can show up in BVMS. Someone disarms the system, we bring up a certain call out and we you know, call up, call up or call out? Call, let's say call out, call up, you're saying up, call up, okay. Sign language, thank you. So we can bring up a certain call up because of an event and show you the video associated with that event. All that stuff just happens because they're connecting. Again, uh, this isn't bailing wire and relays and which I'm a relay guy from way back, I love relays, but 
It works a lot better when you plug two things into a network and can communicate those things over the network. You get a lot more data and a lot more information. The other thing that you get, by the way, I'm going, man. You're going to have to give me that 15-minute warning. You know me. <laughs> the other thing you get, by the way, so we've done a lot of things with Relay Magic over the years, right? So you hook something up with Relay Magic, it works. I take the relay out of here and I put it into that input over there. I test everything. It's great. I love it. I go home or back to my office and the customer says, yeah, but I wish it did this. If we do these things over the network and we use this intelligence, we can change those things remotely. We don't have to drive out there to move the wire. So it's another way when, when people say, oh, well, you can just do that with a relay, right? Well, sure you can, but it doesn't give you as much capability or as flexibility or as much flexibility as this integrated method. Okay, enough about cameras and, and interconnecting cameras to alarm panels, even though it's probably the most unique thing any alarm company can do in this industry. It's pretty cool, I think. Let's talk about some other applications. This has nothing to do with cameras. We're gonna leap back to normal alarm systems and things they could do. We have a feature in our alarm panels called monitor delay and delay response. And what it does is it allows you to monitor doors, drawers, etc., during the day when the system is disarmed. During the day when the system is armed, you ask, or disarmed, you ask, most people think about burglar alarm systems as I've left, I've turned the alarm system on, so if they happen to break in while I'm gone, we're gonna get an alarm. And that's what we've been doing for, you know, I've, I've been in the industry for 40 years. We've been doing that for longer than that, right? Burglar breaks in, sirens go off, somebody comes. But this alarm system is working all day long. It's monitoring everything all day long. It's looking at your door contacts. It's looking at all this stuff. So why not use that to provide higher security during the day? And if you've ever installed an access control system with door propped, everybody know what door propped is? So door propped means somebody propped the door open. They opened the door. It was okay that they opened the door, but they didn't close the door. These doors have a mechanical lock on them. A lot of perimeter doors in most commercial establishments will mechanically close and lock, even if they're not part of the access control system. Well, if you know the door is going to mechanically close and lock on you, you could stick something in the door. Matt and I didn't want to sneak through the crowd earlier. Oh, I'm off camera. Sorry, Matt. So we press that thing, that door is propped open. Now somebody could just walk in there if they want. We can detect that. And if the door is propped open for longer than X, and you decide X is from one second to 60 minutes, whatever makes sense, we can make a noise at the keypad, for example. We can send a report. We can send a text. And you can even stage it. So if the door is open for two minutes, I make a noise at the keypad. If nobody closes the door and it's still open after five minutes, I send a text to the building manager. I send a report to the monitoring station and somebody comes, closes the door. Sorry, I'm leaving the video again for you video people. And your perimeter is secured, just like that. Are you kidding me? I've only got 15 minutes left. My God, I told you I like to talk. Okay, other ways we can monitor and protect uh, perimeter doors again, we think about these doors as the alarm system's on. I don't want anybody breaking in. But we also have emergency doors around the facility. And in the old days, we used to use these DTEX boxes. So you'd press the bar, alarm will sound, and yeah, you could leave if you wanted to, but everybody's going to know. We automate that with the alarm system today. And with that same door contact that you're detecting to see if someone is broken in, you can detect to see if somebody's opened the door during the day. And that's a feature that's built into the alarm system. So you don't need a separate device. You don't need a separate system in order to do that kind of thing. Area control within the system and area arming. Bosch can split the system up into up to 32 different areas, which means that some people can arm and disarm these areas, but they can't arm and disarm those areas. I might want an area that's armed while the other areas are disarmed. 
And, and basically, some people call this partitioning. Some of our competitors call it partitioning. We've always called it areas. They're the same thing, right? A partition is an area, an area is a partition. Some unique things about Bosch, however, is the flexibility with how, in, in how we handle those areas. One is you could run the entire system, all 32 areas, from one keypad if you want. And you could arm them all at once, disarm them all at once. You could go in individually from that one keypad and do that. Or you could have a keypad at each area and arm and disarm them only from those, air, from those keypads or any combination in between. So if this, let's just say this was, a, this was a little military base here, and this says preparation for missions, but let's just say it said ammunition. I wanted that area armed. Even though I am the base manager, I have access to that whole building. And when I disarm, I should be able to see anything I want. I don't want that area to disarm unless I walk over there and disarm it myself. And that's an option with Bosch in addition to arming or disarming everything at once. Our panels have built-in access control as well, and that gives you some capability. You can swipe a card, disarm the system. It's also smart so it knows, for example, if somebody's supposed to be in this area when it's armed or not. If, if Adam's not supposed to be in the area, whatever that is, looks like a bunch of safe deposit boxes, Adam's not supposed to be in there when, the, when that area is armed, then he can't go in, it won't even open the door for him until Matt comes along, because he's the store manager, the building manager, he disarms the system. Now Adam can get in there with his card because the area is now disarmed. So it's smart enough to automate those sorts of things. That monitor delay feature that we have can be used, and if you go to the Chesapeake website, you'll see some unique applications for protecting server racks. You can detect, like just put a door contact on the door of a server rack, you can detect if it's open or not. You can put access control on the server rack to make sure that somebody actually has access so that they can get there or not. If they leave the server rack open too long, you can use that monitor delay feature to say, hey, they left the server rack open too long. You can use that feature on other sensitive areas, like, I couldn't read it, but I'm, I'm presuming that's some sort of ammunition in this. Uh, I, I Googled, show me an ammunition vault. So at least Google thinks that's an ammunition vault. I'm going with it. <laughs> and so if somebody leaves that door open, you got a problem, right? So you can, uh, again, when you think of the alarm system, don't always think of the burglar broke in the sirens went off, we called the police. It can also provide additional level of security for the employees or the whoever is working in that facility to make sure that everything's secure even when the system isn't armed. I'm gonna skip a few of these slides. Uh, well, well, this one's important, two-person arming. If you have an area that is of high security and you need two people to disarm that area in order to enter it, our panels can do that. If you, if you want to use your cell phone, you want to use a smart device to control your system. We have a brand new app called Bosch Security Manager. What Bosch Security Manager does is allows you to use your smartphone to arm and disarm areas, see the status of areas. New features, if you're familiar with Bosch apps uh, formerly, we have recently added the ability to see all your recent history, bypass points, change passcodes right from your app and I can show you how all this works down on the show floor if we have some time later. Here's some of the fancy things you can do with that. Push notifications can come directly to your app and you can filter those. I want to get openings and closings. I only want to get alarms and troubles. I can set that per panel whenever I want to decide which push notifications I want to get. It's kind of neat. Bosch has a cloud service for connectivity. So everybody says, oh, we got a cloud. I saw somebody walking around with a shirt the other day that says there is no cloud, it's just somebody else's computer. Well, that's kind of what it is, right? And, and what, we allow, what we allow you to use our cloud for is connectivity, to make it easy to connect to the panel for service, for using the app, 
so that you don't have to go to the customer's router and open up firewalls and do all kinds of crazy things. As long as the panel can get out and get to the internet and get to our cloud, you can connect to it for remote programming and service and also for the app. The nice thing about that is if you are using it for remote programming and service, there's no charge, it's free, we just let you do it. If you're using it for the app, there is a small charge, we could talk about that, but it's like two bucks a month, so it's no big deal. But for your service technicians to connect to that panel over the network or over cellular, it can use the cloud connection and they don't have to pay for that, which is kind of neat. Our panels can send text messages and emails automatically. Sending stuff to the central station is important, right? That's what an alarm system does. Something bad has happened and I'd like you to send me some help. That's its job and in order to do that, you gotta have a monitoring station, and a, a, a central station, right? Well, you don't have to say they left the server rack open or they left the back door open to the central station. You just wanna send a text about something like that. And those things can be split up so that they left the door open is a text to the building manager they broke the door open at night is an alarm to the monitoring center. Our panels support multiple languages and that can be important in different uh, parts of the, of the world. Uh, you can have English and French or any of these 12 languages here and it follows your passcode. So if I am a Spanish speaker or I'm a French speaker and I enter my passcode, it'll automatically switch to my language for me. Vice versa, it can be in French or Spanish most of the time if you've installed it in some country where there or some area where they want it to be in some other language most of the time. But the English user walks up and there's their passcode, it shows it in English. It can be by keypad. So there are competitors out there that say, oh yeah, we do multiple languages too. But nobody does it with the flexibility and the capability of Bosch. 12 languages by user and by keypad uh, in the same system. Yeah, nobody can do that kind of stuff. We talked about this latest technology and keeping up with the latest technology through these plug-in modules. Again, all of our systems support plug-in modules for cellular and for PSTN. Nobody uses PSTN anymore, so I won't talk about that. But for cellular, we have modules for the LTE network, both Verizon and AT&T. We have modules that work in different countries, like Canada, for example. So the flexibility of being able to plug that in allows you to meet those requirements for that customer depending on where it's going to be communicating from. All of our panels have ethernet on board. And it's not just we stuck an ethernet port on board so we could communicate to the central station. We did that 20 years ago, but now all of our panels are really an ethernet appliance. And that means a lot of things. Uh, they communicate they can do things like integrate with IP cameras, we talked about that. Milestone, Genetech, our own access control, all over the network, they can integrate that way. But data security is really important, and at Bosch, we're very concerned about data security. So all of our panels have encryption built in. You might think about some other competitors who have an encrypted panel for high-end application, and you have to buy their most expensive panel pay more money, and it isn't even as good as Bosch encryption that's included for free with every panel. It isn't even as good, you say, Adam? Well, let me tell you. One of our competitors who remain nameless, especially since I'm on a recording, but you can guess who it is, uses an encryption method called ECB, or Electronic Code Book Encryption, which means there is a list of codes that allow you to encrypt, uh, decrypt that encrypted message. And they keep a secret. Well, it's been broken. There are government agencies who have it, there are customers who have it, and once you have it, you got it, and you can decrypt that message. And if you can decrypt that message, you can replay that message. If you can replay, replay that message, you could spoof out the system and empty the ammunition's vault. That's bad. Bosch uses a method called cipher block chaining which is CBC encryption, which means that a little bit of the password for the next message is in the old, the message you just got, and it continues to flow and continues to change. And basically, it's, it's, it's almost impossible to crack. If you go to 
Wikipedia, if you go to Google and you, and you Google the difference between uh, ECB encryption and CBC encryption, all the propeller heads that live in encryption land will tell you, oh, you should use that one, not that one. We use the one you should use. So if you want a high level of encryption in every level of your panel, if you have customers who might be worried about data security, you should be using a Bosch panel because we have the best, and it's free, the encryption portion at least. We support wireless, both our own Radeon wireless brand as well as Innovonix. Innovonix, anybody ever hear of Innovonix back there? Got some yeses. So Innovonix is a commercial wireless platform. That's all they do and they do a really good job of it. We've been a partner of Innovonix for over 30 years and will continue to be and will continue to support those products. So Bosch has a wide range of motion detectors. We make the best motion detectors in the world. That sounds like it's coming from a marketing guy, and it is, it says that on my business card, but we've tested all the motion detectors in the world. You will get the best catch performance as well as the best false alarm immunity anywhere in the world with a Bosch motion detector, and we can prove it, and we have. We have a wide range of detectors. Our wall mount detectors include three different families. Our blue line detector, which can ignore a 100 pound Rottweiler and catch a 70 pound burglar at the same time. If you don't believe us, go to YouTube. We have videos of that. We have our commercial series, which are used in most commercial applications. They'll support up to a 50 by 50 foot area. We have a feature called anti-mask. So somebody, they remember that guy with a spray can? If he tries to spray paint your motion detector, we can detect that and activate a trouble condition so that you know that he has tampered with your motion detector and you can go react to that before he empties your warehouse. We have our professional series detectors which have these have two lenses on them so they're very unique when you see it. Hey, that's got two lenses. We do that because when you think of uh, an optical system and you think of focal length, if I want to see something far away, I want to have a longer focal length. If I want to see something close, I want to have a shorter focal length. The top lens on this detector has a long focal length because it looks for things far away. The bottom lens has a shorter focal length because it looks for things close up. We do that to provide a better, more accurate signal, which means that we can ignore the raccoon or the skunk or the rat and catch the guy in the hoodie at the same time without any adjustments of the detector. It's so intelligent, you hang it on the wall, you hang it where we tell you to, you point it in the right direction, you walk away, you're never gonna have a false alarm or we're still gonna catch the guy in the hoodie. Ceiling mount detectors for those applications where you can't mount it on the wall, you need to get it up on the ceiling above the area so it's gonna look down on everything. And our request to exit detectors. Can't talk about detectors without talking about our request to exit detectors, especially the DS160. These detectors are designed to work with an access control system. We didn't invent this, but we did perfect it. And the features that they have help you do a really good job of making sure traffic flow through your facility is very good, but also secure. There's these videos going around where somebody sprays canned air through the crack of the door and they activate the Rex detector. Well, guess what? In the late 90s, we invented a feature to guard against that so that you can't do that. It just people don't use it. Just hook this thing up and you can't do that anymore. Oh, really? Really? <laughs> so, so they're very secure that yet again, they work really well and they keep, the, they keep that traffic flow throughout your facility. We have outdoor detectors. When we talk about a detector, there's really three major parts. There's the optics, there's the processing, and then there's other technology that might help it do a better job. We design all our own optics. We have, uh, if you look at a Bosch uh, detector, and we actually have a little demo of this down in the, in the booth as well. You should come down and see, it's pretty cool. Each one of these rows of fingers is a barrier that's, that's full, that's complete, so you can't sneak past the detector. We have the best catch up close to the detector, far away, etc. First step processing, that is a feature where we basically catch the bad guy. If a person walks into the room, we catch them on the first step. If they crawl into the room, if they're wearing a hoodie, if they're wearing a raincoat, we might take three or four steps. But if a person looking like me 
wears and wearing a shirt like this, walks into that room, we got them on the first step. And other tools like temperature compensation that help us reduce false alarms but still maintain good catch performance, all built into our detectors. Now, I got a lot more slides, but I'm getting the hook. So thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to address those down on the floor. We have some of our detectors down there. We have the alarm panel. I can even demo the approach and breach thing if you want to see that. Thank you for your time and thank you for your support of Bosch products.